This is the Ruckus and the Menace Sports Podcast. Oh no! We suck again! I'm getting confused. What game are you calling? I'm calling both games! It is caught by Kelsey! Touchdown! Kansas City! I need three of those things, baby! We ain't done yet! We ain't done yet! You like that? You like that? I like that! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ruckus in the Menace Sports Podcast. I am Ruckus, always causing a ruckus. And I'm Spettus the Menace. And this episode number 111 will have the transition log, the good, bad, the ugly Eastwood segment, the high heat, which is featuring the AFC and NFC East. And then we go to our stud and dud of the week. All righty. Uh, do you want to go for it yeah. on the transition log? Yeah. yeah, the transaction log and kind of this little bit is just, it's again a little bit of housekeeping and a little bit of, a little bit of kind of some, some open pieces along with it as I think we've got a major release that we got to talk about in Madden NFL 25. We've both been getting our hands hands full of it as we are trying to warm up and get used to the new things going on in in the in the game before we take on our Super Bowl runs that's as, true because as um... they will have title and our Super Bowl runs will have titles this year yep i was just going to say uh I've been trying to get used to Caleb Williams and his arm, and also just the play schemes that go on with the Bears, and also the defense, because the defense is definitely a lot different from other teams that I played with, especially the Chiefs, but like, man, that defense is definitely different, and also the... um, Teams I f- have faced in the uh, preseason play nows have been different. It's just a matter of uh, how do I adapt to that. I have enjoyed what I've gotten out of it so far. A whole lot of quality of life changes. Yes, sir. Oh yes, my sir. gosh. It looks beautiful. It the the score car the scoreboard graphics look great. The switch stick stuff is functional for college foot like college football. Being able to stem your routes is actually quite nice. I did that with a uh, Terry McLaurin curl and actually was able to su- successfully stem it and work it for a first down and work it just a little bit deeper so I could get a first down. Um. Not only that, been... but like um, the so whenever you get a touchdown for the Chiefs or you do some like big defensive thing, usually there's the tomahawk chop chant. This year, it took them like four years to finally perfect this, but it almost sounds like they ripped the uh, sounds from um, the tomahawk chop chant from. YouTube. Either Florida State or Atlanta. It just sounds a lot better. It doesn't sound like some people that are off key and just hammer drunk. Like <laughs> it actually yeah. sounds genuine and it it made me feel good inside. But also I played earlier um between the Bears and the Bills and that Bills chant whenever they get a score where it I think it's like, let's go Buffalo. Like, it feels genuine. It's not just some half-assed uh, oh, yeah. rendition. All the, all the things are now definitely genuine. I mean, I haven't messed around with uh, Jacksonville, but I wouldn't be surprised if we're hearing the word Duval. Oh, you I hear them too, because I think it was, I played the first uh, preseason game between the Chiefs and Jags, and you just hear Duval. And the nice thing about it also is, like, even if you're at your home stadium, like, you know how, like, sometimes in between uh, timeouts and stuff, you'll, like, in the broadcast, you'll hear, like, you'll hear the fan- like, music. You'll hear the fans, stuff. yeah. Like, the music like, is mainly what I hear, and it's, like, stuff from, like, they normally hear from 
like a stadium rather than like just the newest hits or whatever's the soundtrack. Oh, they the oh NFL they mix of them. they they mix a combination of things. Uh, one of them I did get a uh, I did get Eminem's Houdini on one of them. Uh, one of them I ended up getting Green Day's American Idiot. Uh, Fifty Cent's in the club. I Drake got, uh, zero to a hundred. Yes, Drake zero to a hundred. I got that. So they they do a really good job with putting in the stadium music, defensive team celebrations, and and having a cut in for that. That look, that's quality of life there. Not even that. Just the announcers, besides just Charles Davis and Brandon Godden. Like, oh, I, know, they, they I turn, a... I need to turn those on and hear Tariko, but I am going to tell you that for mine, for mine, and I will say this for my Super Bowl race or my Super Bowl run productions, it will be me exclusively doing the commentary live action as I do. Now my college ones I have had I do have Reese Davis in the background, but that's because I don't necessarily know all the names of the players that I'm messing around with. I don't know as much about college football. And if I kind of go silent on that or kind of not don't really have a live reaction, I'll just have Reese Davis kind of be white noise. Yeah. Now with Madden on the other hand, I'm going to do those a little more live based because I can pretty much, for the better part of it, know exactly who the players are. Yeah. For me, it was more so, I like to hear a um, more familiar face and or um, someone that isn't as annoying as Brian Gunn and Charles Davis. Like Mike Tirico and Greg Olson, that was good. And I Mike Tirico, Greg Olson, that looks like, that should be an all-time pair. I mean, you've got... Greg Olson, who's number two on Fox, and Mike Tirico, who's the NBC person. I wish Greg Olson just went to NBC, replaced Chris Collinsworth, and that is an actual pair. I don't know if there was another pair besides Brandon Godden and Tirico and uh, Olson, but man, it it's definitely a breath of fresh air. Also, the fact that um, the way they did the presentation and stuff feels like Monday Night Football, but also could be a number of different things, but it's definitely a change of pace compared to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis and just hearing the same old shit from uh, yeah uh, them and then just being like, okay, here we go. And then like also, I mean, yeah, you could turn the audio for the commentary all the way down and just not hear it. That could be a devil. Oh, I, I, turn, but... mine, I turn mine all the way down whenever I'm recording these. Just so you, just so you hear me. But I also like to do. I also turn down the music a little bit too, so that you don't get copyright checks on the videos. But even then, oh, you you I shouldn't. Like to be, you sh I like to do commentary on my on my own, anyways, too. Like you heard in the first uh, season. Yep. And then, now that we have that out of the way. I've got my softball season. My slow pitch ball season is done. We finished in fifth place, winning six of our last seven games before bowing out of the championship Saturday tournament as we were in double elimination and winner go home. We finished fifth as we were the second team out of the championship six eliminated. But it was, was a really great season for... Or else I no homers for me, but I knew that I was getting timely hits whenever I could, and I am really proud of the team because I was kind of thinking like, oh, we'd be around that seventh, like somewhere between sixth and eighth place, and we finished fifth, which was which was a big plus. And next week. We could have done it this week with a little bit of college football, but there's even more games on the docket next week as far as college football. So we are kicking off the film room 
with college football next week. Yeah, boy. Yep, so Ruckus now has the film room championship for us for football season. Woo! And I have not figured out I have not figured out what the challenge is going to be for us yet when it comes to that or kind of what other extra little what whether we do we, it the same. what if we kick it off by um doing instead of a football thing we end the sports season with uh whatever the season is about to end with and then start it with later a football thing so if you get what I'm getting at, I mean we're in football season now, pretty much. It's yes, just but here's the thing: baseball's about to end, and we're going into football. What do you think I'm hinting at? Um, you're thinking of adding some baseball into the film room for. I'm thinking, or at about least doing having a Diamond Dynasty showdown. Hmm. I haven't really played it since, uh, like, a few weeks ago, and I feel like you probably have played it since then, but I think we can No, have I have been showdown. so... Yeah, I've been so focused on football at this point, because I'll, I will tell you right now that all of my... <laughs> and my college football recording stuff, I am nearly through year one of... of from G5 to Natty... I am in the early portion of my junior year on my first road to glory. A second road to glory is coming after after that one is complete. We're waiting on one more roster update for the Septem- before September 5th for the I'm really going to say before Labor Day weekend because I think on Labor Day is when I'm going to start recording because I have I have that day off of work, so I'm going to probably do a lot more recording of of those unless something else hits the plans and I have to start sooner. Um yeah. I just feel uh, like if we're going to do if we're going to kick it off, we might as well do like a Diamond Dynasty thing. Like it doesn't have to be super yeah. intense. We could just go with what yeah. we have for our best. Well, well, let's figure out let's figure out a primetime game and we and we figure that we figure that out. We probably will have to find try and find some time like a little maybe maybe like later on in the week, maybe later on in the week before we uh before we start recording and we'll and it may not be this week's episode we set it, but we but it'll definitely be next week's that we that we set that we set another little primetime game for Diamond Dynasty. Yep, stay tuned. Yep. Now it's got to get me kind of back and warmed up. But but while you guys are waiting for those warm up, those warm ups and possibly that footage, you still have some baseball going on as just this past week just this past Thursday we are now in wild card we're now in divisional weekend or divisional series. For my season two of March to October, as as we just finished up messing with Texas, and now that we've completed messing with Texas and are now on to the ALCS against the Houston Astros, you all will have a grand total of five episodes left. And you and the final episode of that will be released on September second, and that series will end. And I guarantee you that it's gonna be a it's gonna be a pretty dynamic way that it is going to end. And All now right. we move on to the Eastwood segment, the good. The bad, the ugly, and a dynamic tumbleweed rolling across. All right. So, what is good in sports this week, Spennis? We are sticking with 
baseball. As this past week, the MLB had their players weekend and Little League Classic. And there were some great moments involved with that. As players had pencil bats and there was Jackson Merrill had a lightsaber bat that was glow in the dark and there were some crayons, some pencils. (laughs) Oh, various like decorations, charities charities being donated to or charities having things. Harper's bat have some painting done by his kids on the bat. I guess something I I know there were a whole bunch of creative bats that were done on Friday night. It it used to be that the players weekend was jerseys with nicknames on them. Yes. But now they've kind of done But now they've kind of done something a little different and it's not bad. And then the Little League Classic with the Tigers and the Yankees, I think the Tigers were the ones that really took it in and actually experienced a whole bunch of stuff in Williamsport and and giving the kids there some fun times as well with being able to kick it with some major leaguers for a little while. I feel like the whole um, magazine cutout design for the hats was a little weird, but at the same time, it is what it is. Like, they're trying to have fun, but I was just kind of like, thought it'd be cooler if, like, they either had a patch dedicating it, or if they um, had some, like, emblem. Kind of like in uh, Call of Duty, where, like, it was just, like, the emblem, like, symbol of things. I don't know. It, either but, way, it was a different change of pace for seeing what they did for symbolizing what they wanted to symbolize for um, the Players Weekend. Besides just having a jersey that's dedicated to their nickname and a fancy design on their jersey. Yeah. I mean, the NFL has their My Cause, My Cleats. Baseball, you now were able to do stuff creatively with the bats with no issues. And actually, I love the Little League Classic because you had the Tigers player that actually was going down on the hill in a cardboard in the cardboard box. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, those were actually like the players. Like that's why I was saying the MLB players, like at the Little League Classic, were having the Tigers were especially having fun with the kids on, like in the it at Williamsport, PA. Because the Little League World Series is going on right now as we speak. But now that we've kind of gotten through the good, what was not so good this week? Well, Robert Griffin III was fired from ESPN a couple months after being replaced by yours truly, Jason Kelsey, on Monday Night Countdown. And this was some new news! Too soon, too soon. <laughs> oh, gosh. Come on. Um, you, I, knew it, you, I knew you were going with there. Like... It was there. I mean, the fruit was maybe hanging a little low, but at the same time... ESPN needs to figure out their budgeting. Or at least, like, be more chill with the fact that of what happened because him being fired out of the blue like that and then being on the news like that it could be either embarrassing or a oh shit moment where it's like he just got cut out of nowhere like if you're gonna budget or at least sign a guy like Kelsey to a big contract like here's the thing in a couple in like a year or so I bet you Kelsey gets cut no doubt about it because if they're going to give oh. RG3 a big contract and then be like, oh, by the way, we're going to cut you like a couple years before your contract is up. Imagine what they're going to do to Kelsey and other people that become more popular by night and then by uh, day, meaning like a year or two from now, they're just like not known at all. It's almost like in a sense of like how the Hollywood life cycle is like with um, Idris Elba, uh, the action star slash uh, just n- star that came out of nowhere, 
was like irrelevant after like a year or two, and then somehow Idris Elba she... right now is doing the voice for Knuckles for the Sonic the Hedgehog line and is good. But yeah, that also brings my point up to that because before that, a couple of years prior, or even then, he was a star in Fast and Furious and other movies, and then all of a sudden, like a couple of years later, he played a significant character in the new DLC for Cyberpunk, but. No one cared that much, and then it kind of, his like stock dwindled down. Like, yeah, he could be a voice actor for a big uh, animated film, but before that, he was the hottest thing ever. And right now, Jason Kelsey is the hottest thing ever because not only is his younger brother Travis um, playing still in the league, as, as, as still in the league, playing at his highest level ever. Also, I mean, I'm not going to discount him on this, but um, he's dating one of the more popular uh, pop stars out there. Yeah. The reason why I said that uh, I'm not discounting him is because I knew Travis Kelsey before he started daving. T- daving. I, daving I, knew, I knew who Swift. Travis Kelsey was, too. Uh, I had like, Travis Kelsey on my fantasy teams before then. Yep, and I had him last year before uh, he took a step back, but that's besides the point. Um, I think that uh, before he even dated Taylor, he was very relevant. It was just the fact that the t- the Swifties wanted more uh, publicity over it because they're like, "Oh my god!" Da, 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 da. But anyways, I point is, I think Jason Kelsey is probably going to get. Uh, fired in a couple of years and then people are going to be like oh I wonder what happened it's because ESPN no, no, not only do they want to save the company but they also want to cut money where they can to be either more efficient with their payroll or they want to give that money to someone else that will become higher up on the chain as far as popularity I'm going to say this, as far as Jason Kelsey goes, I disagree. I I think that Robert Griffin III is not as charismatic as Jason Kelsey. They've got enough guys that can do the good analytics. You have Dan Orlovsky, you have Ryan Clark, you have multiple names that have good analysis and Robert Griffin the 3rd his analysis was not horrible it wasn't the worst thing in the world but Dan Orlovsky also uh couldn't admit to a fart on the mic too that is beside the point it's like, good content though i mean it is good co- i mean it's good content and Jason Kelsey as you even could tell with New Heights, is a funny, goofy, big guy. Of course they're going to have that there. And I think that Jason Kelsey's charisma and these things that Kelsey has as just a character in terms of just his personality, I That's think cute. fits... It fits the mold of what ESPN would want. I just, I don't expect him to get heated with, with somebody like a Stephen A. Smith over anything. Uh, I, hold my beer because Stephen A. Smith makes ESPN, whether you like it or not. Yeah, but I'm saying that I don't think Jason Kelsey would be somebody who would, like, get into a heated debate. I don't that. think it, it really matters with Jason Kelsey, though, because you could put someone else in the fire with Stephen A. Smith and it would still be uh, a viewership galore. I mean, heck, they got Unk! They got Unk for crying out loud. Who, Shannon? Yeah! Yeah, ESPN right now, as far as first take, I think, I think Stephen A. is still like is still like having occasional ones with uh, Unk. Or is Shannon Sharp now kind of now moved on to his just his whole club Shay Shay stuff and everything outside of that? 
Yep, the good old scotch and the uh, fire or the. Um, I don't think yeah. it was scotch. I thought it was Henny. Oh, it was Hennessy. Right. Anyways, yeah, the, we go the scotch is to... the scotch is a little too far down the line. <laughs> too far down the line. Way, it's hard liquor that I don't understand. <laughs> Anyways, uh, <laughs> downright ugly. The quarterback situation for Skull Nation, the Minnesota Vikings, as first round pick JJ McCarthy is now out for the season for a meniscus repair in one of his knees. Also, I feel like this reason. Go ahead. I feel oh, like this was this has to have been some leftover residual unresolved damage that was done probably while he was at University of Michigan before it was drafted. Because if they would have gone in for that complete repair, there had to have been something wrong prior to that where the tear may not have been as bad. Also, another thing, uh, the post from social media was a little bit sus because I believe it was Ian Rappaport and or just the ES because Ian Rappaport works for NFL in general, but yeah, that's NFL ES- Network. Yeah, ESPN reported on social media. Oh, something about JJ McCarthy, and then it was one of those threads where like almost felt like you were just falling for a spammy thing just to be like, oh, you why are you hitting yourself or shit like that? They didn't say in specific like ten minutes at or ten minutes before the actual post was happening, but then afterwards they're like, oh, by the way, J.J. McCarthy is out for the season and for Minnesota Vikings fans, that might have been a stroke and a half. And for me, I was just like, what the hell? Like, why even like add suspense to something like that where it's like a first round pick from the Vikings, J.J. McCarthy is just out. But you just add suspense to that. It's like, what the hell? Like, I feel like well, that's probably not as bad as uh, the stuff that happened with Pittsburgh a couple of years ago with uh, a certain quarterback. But it's but... just, it's like having breaking news. It's like you have breaking news and they want to be the first to get there. They want to be the first one to drop something. And they're like, oh, this is what we're going to drop. But we have no information. And it's then it's really goddamn then, annoying when that happens. Oh yeah, it's it is it but I've been in TV news for a good bit of time and that's kind of how they it's kind of how that industry and this news industry kind of gets into it and kind of how it operates. They'll start with just something super generic. And then and then ultimately, like as time like develops, the information is dug out for. That's just the nature of the beast, my guy. But also, and... if you're gonna have the um if you don't have the information, but you're also gonna be like uh crying wolf at the same time, like the risk of crying wolf. I think it's better to just have the news at that point rather than being the first to uh, the throne because here's the thing. Even if you're first to the throne, it doesn't mean that you're going to have the most accurate information and or uh, the most relevant thing because someone else could have different information and screw the whole thing up. No, you're not... I'm not disagreeing with you at all. I'm just telling you as just seeing what that is from. Seeing that from the other side of the curtain is kind of. It's almost like I'm trying to give you like a little bit of insight of what goes on behind the curtain. Yeah, because I've because I've been on that side. Or I've been around that side and exposed to that side. Yeah. So I can understand so I can understand it a little bit more of this is what happens when this information when they're first receiving the information 
they're like, hey, this is what's going on. We are working on getting more details to let you know, hey, this is what is the cause of this. Or it's like investigative journalism and and also kind of how how you see like different stories over over time, like when you're on the when you're watching the news of like somebody getting like a major case or something like that, where it's like, oh, you'll have like updates to this as you as things happen. Yeah, I just it's get annoyed kinda... whenever people are like, oh, breaking news, uh, someone took a dump in the woods, and it's like, okay, that's not really news, but okay. Yeah, but if it was something related to, say, like, O.J. Simpson and the Bronco, or all these other... Like, if you're gonna do that, make it make sense. Yeah. And I think the J.J. McCarthy thing and how you were saying, like, oh, J.J. McCarthy is injured. Oh, now, we'll, oh, we've now kind of investigated a little bit more and kind of see what the details are. This is why he's out. Okay, that is something that, yes, you can do a breaking news portion on that, but then be able to dive in for more information and have it make sense as to why that's the case. All right. Uh, do we want to go into our next segment now? Yes, let's move on to the high heat. And we are now to the third week of the NFL preview season. And it is the Eastern Divisions of the AFC and NFC East. East? I thought you meant West. That's next week, Ruckus. And by the way, that's West. You're fired, Patrick. Oh, darn. (laughs) Anyways. But ultimately, we're now into the Eastern Divisions, and we will start with the AFC East and talking about the Buffalo Bills. Duh, Bills! Um, All right, so for my little analysis I have on the Bills is keep Joshy Boy healthy. Joshy Boy meaning Josh Allen, uh, your main man, because for the past couple of seasons, he either gets hit with an injury bug where his arm doesn't work as well as it used to, and he starts throwing interceptions left and right. Also, he's your biggest weapon when it comes to just in general running the damn ball and being a tank. He's like the better version of Derrick Henry, where he's just hauling ass and taking names. and uh, Better version? Yes, because he can actually take better... He can... He... uh, I think he's a better version because he'll literally tank through anybody and jump through anybody. Whereas all Derrick Henry does is try to trip up the tackle... The people are trying to tackle him, and then he just kind of runs and does his thing. Whereas he has a Josh, stiff. He has a stiff arm. Derrick Henry has a stiff arm. Josh Allen doesn't need a stiff arm. He just jumps over the dudes and keeps going for a first down. How far yeah, is you're... Derrick Henry? Okay, okay. I kind of you are you are trying to say that Josh Josh Allen is a better version. He's in more terms efficient. Of being a freight train. He's more efficient. It, How many other times has Derrick Henry been uh, farther in the playoffs than Josh Allen? There was one other time. Yeah, Josh but Allen has jo- been talked about but realize, more. Realize, Josh Allen is a quarterback. Derrick Henry is a running back. You are comparing an apple to an orange, my guy. But also, he'll be competing with uh, Lamar Jackson for the QB spot. Uh, Derrick Henry can throw halfback passes, yes. And I'm not surprised if John Harbaugh throws that into the into the trick playbook. Don't never rule it out. But at the same time, Derrick Henry is not a quarterback. Josh Allen is. But I, though the defense of the Bills is also a known calling card, and the health there is probably just as paramount, if not more, 
I believe the key to success for the Bills actually will more so be based on a couple of the players that Joshy Boy has to throw to. Which the is key not to success. Many. Yeah, the weapon. Yeah, because you lost wide receiver one, Stephon Diggs, and wide receiver two, Gabe Davis, Debate to me. AFC South. Depth chart says wide receiver two. Depth chart last year said that Gabe Davis was wide receiver two. They still have Shakir, but that, but as far as like target share, yeah, that may that may end up being the case. But the depth chart still had Gabe Davis at wide receiver two. So just roll with me here. <laughs> I'm just giving you shit at the end of the day. But yeah, here we but go. the key to success here is going to be how Keon Coleman and Curtis Samuel perform in support of Josh Allen in the passing game. Notice how he doesn't is... say MVS at all, because MVS is kind of booty cheeks. Well, MVS is also wide rec- is probably going to be in a position battle for wide receiver three. Also, in Madden, he is on the depth chart for wide receiver three, which I'd, which makes no sense because Shakir should be wide receiver three, in all honesty. But I wouldn't be surprised if you're seeing Josh Allen in more four wide receiver sets this season with kind of how that is. But Madden, Madden's depth charts are not always the most accurate when the game first comes out. Also, it's dumb logic with Madden, but here we are. But we digress. And now we move on to the Miami Dolphins. All right. For my analysis, I put keep Tyreek Hill in check because obviously he hasn't kept himself in check and anything can happen in this league. And I would hate for Tua to turn the ball over more because of the fact that Tyreek Hill is just not in the same boat. Go ahead, Spenis. Oh, Tyreek. Uh, the issue for me is not so much Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill is gonna he Tyreek Hill gonna be Tyreek Hill, and that is the thing. The offense is just outstanding. They are, they still have the core that they that they kept from a year ago, but there is one determining factor as to whether or not it's gonna be a deep playoff run. Or first round sayonara. And that is the defensive side of the ball. They were one of the oldest in the league when it came to the defense a year ago. If they ma- if they manage to have younger players be very effective in that Dolphins defense, they can- they have the potential to go places. If not or the injury bug kind of hits them a little bit harder on the defensive side of the ball, this ain't going to last long. And now we move on to Gang Green and the J-E-T-S Jets, Jets, Jets. Oh, don't get your hopes up there. I think Hippie Rogers needs to stay healthy, and so does the mantra for the franchise, because last season... We were thinking, oh, Aaron Rodgers is going to, well, we, uh, more like the Jets faithful, were thinking, oh, Rodgers is going to save our franchise and nothing can go wrong. And then uh, Rodgers was down like after like, what, like four reps or not even four reps, like four uh plays and then was gone for the rest and of the I'm gonna season. say on top of that I think the real reason for that was more so a blown more so an assignment was blown I think that was more the injury to Rodgers was Rodgers having to escape because of a blown assignment on his blind side but I am really gonna say how Rodgers performs following the torn Achilles And the stinginess of the calling card of the Jets, known as their defense, will be the difference makers between them being a potential wildcard team and not even getting a sniff of the playoffs. Yeah, they just, they need to uh, keep their head in the game, if anything, in general. I think they've got, I think they've got the personnel to do it. They have the personnel and the potential 
to do it. As Croft Gar- said in Emperor's New Groove, right. You got Brees Hall who can run the football. You've got Garrett Wilson as your number one wide receiver. They've got guys. They've got the guys to do it, especially on the defensive side. They've got they've got the guys that the potential is there. It's just a matter of being able to execute on that. Again, I'm going to go with my gut and say, right. All right. Let's keep going with the Patriots. And for this... that, I have keep developing the young talent with uh, Drake May and just keep trucking. That's all I've got for the Patriots. The biggest thing I'm going to say for the Patriots here, embrace the growing pains and the rebuild. They are very young when it comes to quarterback as they have two quarterbacks under the age of 30. I mean, they have Ramondre Stevenson at running back. They've got they've got guys that can do some things, but I think but I think Gerard Mayo was left with was a shell it had developed there in New England. It's just a shell, like pieces of it. All and right. then they also and and along with this rebuild, they lose the guy they trade away now the guy whose body was built by Taco Bell in Matthew Judon. <laughs> who was probably their best defensive player. So I think they are really now more so just embracing the true rebuild or even like now finally after 10 plus years of dominance, they're now probably going to go into another 15 plus years of futility. All right, are we ready for our winners? Yep, let's see who we got. All right, I think that Bills Mafia gets the last leg on the Dolphins because the Dolphins will, at the end of the day, be the Dolphins. And I think, for the most part, their time is up as far as defense goes. Offense is probably better than the defense. No shit, Sherlock. But I think Bills Mafia has it because their division is not as... uh, deep as it used to be let's see i think the dolphins i mean although they have calais campbell who's 37 they've got they've they have gotten young they've gotten younger they lost christian wilkins which does hurt them but they look they look like they've gotten younger and they've got guys like chop robinson who Potential rookie. They've got Kendall Fuller, who's kind of on a little bit of a twilight, like maybe on the later stretches of his career, along with Jalen Ramsey. So, I mean, they have guys. And they have like a mix of vets and... They have a mix of vets and... Uh, and youth. So it's like they've gotten just overall a little younger. They don't have everybody being over, over the age of 30, but... They definitely have, I think, a semblance of players that can stay healthy enough. So I have Miami winning the division with the Bills and potentially the Jets finding a way to keep it close. And our bold predictions for this. I think Tyreek Hill goes for 1,000 yards and then slightly uh, gets hurt. Brees Hall came just four yards short of a thousand yards last season. Or actually, it might have been six yards. He was inside 10 yards. But I believe that Brees Hall will be a 1,000 yard rusher when this year is all said and done. And now we move on to my division. The NFC East. 
And we will move on to the New York football giants. All right. For the giants, they need to stay in tune with Daniel Jones, no matter how crappy he can be. Enough said. I am looking at this this way. The biggest staple that the that the Giants have, their edge rushers are scary. You got Brian Burns on one side and Kayvon Thibodeau on the other. But I think the biggest nail in the coffin that will affect the Giants season is not even Daniel Jones. It is losing Saquon Barkley to cross-divisional rival Philadelphia. That is the biggest nail in their coffin because now they've gone to a running game by committee led by Devin Singletary, who barely could lead the running back by committee last year in Houston. Well, Houston wasn't really uh, the greatest either, but... I, I get your point. Yeah, it's it's more so that the running game in Houston, granted, was futile, but you now go to a team who probably has just about the same set of lack of skill and ineptitude in the running game, except that Saquon Barkley was a freak of nature of a running back. Well, when he was healthy. That is true. But I'm saying that more so in a general sense of if Saquon's out there, Saquon was going to be a freak of nature of running back. Which, Simple thing is, he was only really good for one year, but the rest of the time he was hurt. Yeah, so I think Philadelphia even overpaid for limited proven talent. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, but, and Spanish's uh most Oh hated no we are season. yeah, we yeah, I was like, okay, I was like, where are you going with this? I was like, oh the Dallas Cowboys. Yep. Spanish's most hated franchise ever. Uh the Dallas Cowboys. I think Jerry World is gonna be Jerry World because even I think he has a loose screw because the whole contract situation with C D Lamb and uh Dak Prescott that's how I'm being like, well, uh, I ain't gonna say I'm gonna sign him or anything like that, but also I look like Emperor Palpatine from Star Wars, but here we are. Jerry World is gonna be Jerry World. I'll let you, uh, light the fire, Spennis. Here is where I am at. The Dallas Cowboys are basically, in my comparison, to Atlanta, or not Atlanta, Aladdin's, or the Genie's Magic Lamp. Tons of cosmic power. Itty bit of living space. <laughs> also, J-Lo has As... more rings than the Cowboys. You're welcome. Wait. J-Lo, I think Dallas, I think Dallas might have more. I don't think... Has J-Lo been married six times? I think she's ma been married more than that, my guy. We could probably Google now, this. Now, I know that Elizabeth Taylor has been married more, as far as, like, a celebrity. No. Nope. Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys have more Super Bowl rings than J-Lo has been married, than J-Lo would have wedding rings. As J Lo has been married four times. Okay, I don't remember where the meme was for that, but I just remember seeing something about how many times J Lo was married, or something about how J Lo had more ring to it. Fake news. Go ahead, Spence. Sorry. Thanks. Uh, technically, Elizabeth Taylor has been married eight times, but tw but seven, eight times to seven different. So. Elizabeth Taylor still has more wedding rings than the Cowboys Super Super Bowl rings, but I knew that you were like, as soon as you went into the J-Lo thing, I was like, I think J-Lo's only been married four times. <laughs> but Dallas Honestly, tons I think it was of probably engagement rings, if anything. Maybe that's what it was. It, ah. But tons of potential to play well for the Cowboys and have a deep postseason run. 
because all the delusional Cowboys fans will be like, oh, this is our year. Oh, this is our year. So did the Chiefs oh, fans for a long time. Oh, no, it isn't. Are. The Cowboys have the itty-bitty space for success that co- to come to fruition because they will always find a way to shoot themselves in the foot. Stephen A. Smith has always been a pretty savant person when it comes to saying that the Dallas Cowboys are a walking accident waiting to happen. And once again, I think this is another year where the Cowboys could very well be a walking accident waiting to happen. Stamp that, and I will, and I will put my ten toes in and stand it on business on that one. All right. So next off is the Philadelphia Eagles, and I have for my analysis. For the love of God, don't repeat the end of last year because that was really embarrassing for the franchise, especially because Jason Kelsey had his last year, and his last year ended up being. A first round ticket to uh, Lostville because his team just fell apart at the worst possible time. But here's where I'm at. The potential for the Eagles is sky high like they're flying. The talent level for them. Sky high like the talent that they're flying. But it is so long as they are able to remain on course and Jalen Hurts and Nick Sirianni were able to get their get their business in check and be on the same page and finding a suitable replacement for Jason Kelsey under that Jalen Hurts will feel comfortable snapping to and also being able to stay healthy, especially with Saquon Barkley staying healthy, there are a lot of critical points that the Eagles will need to have for offensive success. Kellen Moore provides a very interesting playbook for them, but I but the hard part is is that for the Eagles to have a deep run, I don't think Kellen Moore is fully the answer there in Philly in terms of a playbook. And now we can move on to my squad, the Washington Commanders. All right, so my analysis on the Commanders is Keep developing Daniels and you should be Gucci. In other words, I think the commanders are definitely on the right path. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Is where I'm at with this. It is a new era in old DC. Thus why my title for my Super Bowl run will be that. But the goal here for the commanders. Dan Quinn has been putting this team together in a way that it is very easy to buy in. I think if they buy in to what Dan Quinn's got coming for them, this team is going to go places. There is a lot of young talent with great veteran mentorship. Beat these young players be a sponge to these guys like Austin e- with Austin Eckler, Bobby Wagner. I think Bobby Wagner is going to have a renaissance type of season again. Jaden Daniel, and now they've officially had Jaden Daniels be the starter. And Jaden Daniels, I watched that preseason game in his in his drives on offense and he is moving and granted it may not be against full first units and superstars, but he looked like he was moving the ball pretty well for us on a regular consistent basis. 
And if he can do that against the legitimate competition that is coming our way, the sky's the limit. Cohesion and having all of the all of these things gel will make this team a handful for opponents. And will give opponents fits. But who do we have winning the division? All right, I have the Eagles and Commanders battling it out, and the Eagles win the division just barely near the end of the season. Right. Well, last year, the NFC East champion was the Dallas Cowboys. There has not been a new, or or there has not been a repeat NFC East champion for quite a while now. And I believe... believe this is they have the longest streak currently without a consecutive division title they have not had a repeat winner since 2004 when the eagles had won their fourth of four i do not see a repeat champion in the nfc east Yet again this year, as I think the Eagles are ultimately going to be the team that I think will find a way to get everything to come together somehow and be the division champs. But the Cowboys will chase, and I think the Commanders are going to hang around for a lot longer than what people will think that they are hanging around for. And our bold prediction, we both actually, ironically enough, we both chose Commander's predictions. I think they took it out of the wild card and surprise a lot of people. And here's where I'm at. Although the Chicago Bears will have Caleb Williams, and there are a couple of really good wide receivers in this draft class, I have Jaden Daniels winning the Offensive Rookie of the Year. Jaden Daniels will win Offensive Rookie of the Year. And now we... And now we move on to our stud and dud of the week. I'll let you go first, Spenis. Well, I was going to let you roll through first just simply because we normally start with you anyway. All right. Um, So, for my stud this week, I have Patrick Mahomes for his flaws behind the back pass to Travis Kelsey. And I say that because he looked smooth. I love the reason why he went with that, though. And I'm sure you heard why he went behind the back in the game. Uh, Andy Reid had been wanting to do that, him wanting him to do that for some time. But the reason why he he did that in that particular situation was actually because Travis Kelsey messed up. He didn't get he wasn't able to get all the way out on his uh, out route because it was supposed to be an out route. And, of course, he would have been able to get by that defender, but he didn't. Been able to get by that outside of that system, so he didn't have to throw it that way. But he threw it behind the back and left it a little low, but Kelsey was still able to catch it for a first down. It looked nice, though. And the worst part was was that it was a little low. But, But that was the actual reason behind Mahomes doing the behind the back pass was because... Kelsey screwed up. Or didn't get uh, or didn't quite do it correctly. Yeah. Alright. So, and then my honorable mention for a stud is Dyron Blanco for having a seven RBI night on game two, which included two dingers and one of them being a grand slam. 
And he was, he did this while doing his best Big Al impression of I'm Big Al and I hit dingers. And then my dud of the week is the Reds getting swept by the Royals and Bobby Wett getting walked in the first game of the series instead of giving him the benefit of the doubt. By maybe getting a cycle or just continuing his offensive tear. All right, so I mean, that's what you Bobby got. Witt right now. Bobby Witt Jr. right now is the one person that is stopping Aaron Joe Aaron Judge from having an AL triple crown. As Bobby Witt is leading leading the AL in batting average. That's that's just a for the record. <laughs> but my stud this week goes to W a pair of WNBA rookies. Angel Reese got her 20th double double on the season. And then Caitlin Clark with her rookie assists mark being set in in a pair of games over the weekend. And my dud goes to former Dolphins coach Brian Flores for being a completely unhealthy coach for Tua Tagovailoa, basically turning him t- him, him into Tua turn the ball over before Mike McDaniel had to train it out of Tua and believed in him over two over the last two years. Tua basically called out Brian Flores for this. And I think I flipped it more so to Brian Flores being the dud instead of giving two of the two an honorable mention for this, just simply because Brian Flores also you think he also had to su- was suing the league for talking about tanking, but yet but yet it was your own fault for not being able to develop Tua who the team was wanting to draft and put him into the situation where he could best succeed. And you left it to a coach that looked like a combination of Logic and Rob Schneider to have to actually believe and get Tua out of the funk that you put him in? Excuse me? Something here is not aligning. The maths ain't mathin'. <laughs> As nothing here with what you did to that quarterback is adding up. If you're picking up what I'm putting down. Yes, I'm putting it down. Yep. I'm sure you probably have more to say on this. <laughs> no, not really. Uh, what's... <laughs> Yep, go ahead and take us out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to the Ruckus and Menace Sports Podcast. This is Ruckus, always causing a ruckus. I'm Spanish and Menace. And this has been a Ruckus and the Menace Sports Production, the best sports production podcast uh, in the land. We'll see you guys next time in episode number 112. I am Ruckus, and we'll see you later. Deuces.